Hello, everyone, and welcome to a live dispatch from home. I am Patricia Butler, the CEO and co-founder of ArtistWorks. We're an online music instruction company, and we work with 37 world-renowned musicians who have come into our studio and recorded pretty much everything they know. And that means we can teach pretty much anything you would like to learn. And I'm joined today by my co-host, Marcus Liskum. Hi, good to see you, Patricia. And likewise, Marcus, it's good to see you too. Normally, we're together in an office, but uh, not lately, right? Yeah, different days. <laughs> Got to do it this way, but uh, all the same, we're making it work. <laughs> yeah, we are indeed. So for those of you joining us at home um, today, uh, we're going to be talking to two of the Artist Works online faculty, um, Michael Daves, uh, who teaches vocals, bluegrass vocals, actually, at Artist Works. He's just got a phenomenal voice. I can't wait to hear him sing, but he also plays the guitar. Um, Multi-talented. Uh, and we're also joined uh, by Missy Rains, who teaches bluegrass bass at Artist Works, but she's also a vocalist as well. So what do we know about these two guys, Marcus? Well, Michael Daves is Grammy nominated and yeah, he's a multi-instrumentalist as well as a fantastic singer. Um, what he can teach you to do as far as getting your voice in tune with whatever it is that you play and really just finding that, finding your voice. Um, he's really the guy to, for that. Uh, Missy just secured her ninth IBMA bass player of the wow. year award. It's unbelievable. And also won another IBMA as co-writer of the song of the year. Wow. So we're also amazingly proud to have her on the roster and uh, she'll teach you everything you ever wanted to know about upright bass. Yeah, that's really, that's really true. And thanks for that introduction, Marcus. And I will say that these are two of the greatest voices in bluegrass in more ways than one. And they both uphold the genre. Um, and we're very proud, as you say, Marcus, to have them on the roster uh, but they both are very involved in the business of bluegrass. And so we're happy to have them join us today. Uh, and we are going to lead off this show or this event uh, with Michael Dave's singing. So he's going to sing Ma Nine Pound Hammer. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this over to Michael Dave's. Hey, Patricia and Marcus and everyone watching. Uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, I'm going to kick it off with the standard. Uh, this is uh, kind of traditional song uh, brought to country music and bluegrass music by Merle Travis. And I was playing it because uh, one of the things we'll be talking about tonight is it did a, well, before the pandemic, did a, an interview with Bobby Osborne of the Osborne Brothers, great, one of the great bluegrass tenor singers and mandolin players all the, the time. This, this, is, this is what he chose to start off the interview with. And he did sort of a Merle Travis style picking thing on the mandolin. And I'm going to do it in his key, which is pretty high because it's Bobby Osborne. So, Oh, 
Stone. I the number nine coal, I the number nine coal. Roll on, buddy. Don't you roll so slow. How can I roll when we won't go? Roll on, buddy. Don't you take your time. I'm broke down and I can't make mine. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. That was wonderful. Yes. Virtual applause and real applause. <laughs> awesome. So now we'd like to also bring on our next guest, uh, which is Missy Rains. Hi, folks. Hey, Thanks. Missy. Thanks for joining us. It's really great to have you both here. Great vocalists, great voices in and for bluegrass. This is wonderful. I'm very excited. I am too. This is my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. So we're, you're in Nashville right? Yeah, I'm home in Nashville. And uh, um, it's kind of fall weather, which is um, uh, unusual for for this for Nashville to, to be experiencing these cooler temperatures at this time of year. So it's nice. Right. And so, um, Michael, you're up there in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. Lots of things happening up there right now. <laughs> is it all good? Or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, it's, 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 it's all good, you know. We have uh, the weather's been back and forth, but you know it's it's you know things are opening back up. You know, kids are going back to school in this fairly you know limited way. Uh, you know, some days and not others, and um, uh, you know, yeah. kind of figuring out what's working and what's not working. <laughs> what can you say? What yeah. can you say? We're still doing the same dang thing we've been doing for six months. Like I haven't yeah. seen Marcus in the flesh. I don't even know Marcus. How long has it been? I don't remember that far back. It feels like, <laughs> <laughs> but you got the power on today, which is great, Michael. So <laughs> I think last time there was a lightning storm whipping through. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. My internet went out right in the middle of the <laughs> live stream, left, left Tony Trishka, uh, in, in the lurch to cover for me. But fortunately, uh, Fortunately, it's Tony Trishka, and so yeah, no. <laughs> he has things to say. He he, he plays does. lots of notes. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> jokes to tell. Lots of jokes, yes. Yeah, but that's why we don't do um, these broadcasts any longer with just one person. Yeah, because things happen. I mean, it, I think some of us have Zoom fatigue. You know, enough of the Zooms with everybody who wants to talk to you all the time, but. Um, Boy, am I glad when we're doing these live events, we've got two artists on here, though, because the, the situation you ran into, which was first technology and then a storm came through, has happened a couple of times. And I've been so thankful we've had two people on. Yeah. And, it's been good. Yeah. And I'm bummed. It's so great to see Missy. <laughs> oh, it's great to see you, Michael. Yeah. Missy and I were supposed, we were supposed to do uh, the this berkeley folk festival this was like early april and it was that, that was my first gig that got canceled uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic and i was so uh bummed because it was going to be me and missy and uh, tony trishka and alice gerard uh, and Lori lewis tatiana hargraves oh. and uh, i know peter owen was going to be out there too and it was just this uh i was still looking forward to this hang and i was like <laughs> trying to figure out is it going to happen is it going to happen and then like everything just shut down all of a sudden. <laughs> I know that, that was heartbreaking that, I, I mean, all of the gigs were, were hard to yeah. let go of, but some of them hurt a little bit more than others. Yeah. Well, I hope we can reschedule that one. One of these days. I do too. Yeah. So Marcus, um, you know a little bit more about what's been going on with the IBMA and everything. Um, maybe you could, uh, jump into the conversation and, and, um, Let's find out a little bit more information here, huh? Yeah, well, I think it's best to just get it straight from the source, Missy. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about what went down this year? Some really uh, great new awards to add to your long list. <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, IBMA into the International Bluegrass Music Association uh, decided to go virtual this year. Um, and boy, they just, they really rose to the occasion and did an, an amazing job um, carrying off their conference all week and then um, an award show and then a festival basically over the weekend. It was pretty, pretty massive and, and it was 
um, just pretty amazing. And so this year, instead of being in Raleigh, North Carolina, like sitting in the auditorium in uncomfortable shoes and um, uncomfortable dress, <laughs> <laughs> I sat in the comfort of a, a friend's backyard in the in um, the chilly air and with around a fire with a bunch of socially distanced friends and watched it on a big screen, watched the award show that is and. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I was really honored um, to have been named uh, Bass Player of the Year, um, and so again, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Uh, you've been racking those up for a while now. What was this? Is number nine? It is number nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is number nine. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, um, I yeah. So you you know that um, I sometimes tour with the with the first ladies of bluegrass and. Uh, so we got dubbed that just because we were all the first women to have won in our instrumental categories. And, um, um, you know, Molly Tuttle, Sierra Hall, Becky Buller, and Allison Brown and myself. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that group of women spans across uh, a couple of... Um, uh, centuries. <laughs> and so I like to joke that, you know, we, you know, we were all the first women to win in our individual categories and some of us won in different centuries <laughs> and some of us won in both centuries. So it was like, you know, it's just a, just an old person joke. <laughs> Very cool. And tell us about the song of the year. That was something new for you this year, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, um, I, I Alison Brown was, was producing uh, the Special Consensus uh, latest album, and it had a Chicago-based theme because Chicago was experiencing, um, I, I think it was uh, a the, uh, an anniversary, and uh, Special Consensus was celebrating a f its 45th year of being a band, which is pretty amazing. And um, so anyway, she asked Becky and I to, um, uh, Becky Buller and I to write a song about the Chicago Barn Dance, which was the early um, predecessor to the w to WSM to, uh, radio show. And um, it was a radio show that that uh, ha brought, had in early the Monroe Brothers and, you know, lots of early country music uh, uh, greats and legends and bluegrass folks. So anyway, we, we, we along with Allison, wrote, wrote the song, and it ended up winning Song of the Year. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's, a big, that's another big win for you, and we've been happy to have you know, quite a few of our artists um, win industry awards and be recognized mm -hmm. um, by their peers. And, of course, Michael, you've been nominated for a Grammy as well. What, um, tell us a little bit about that. Um, what tune, what, uh, what album, what, tell us about that. Oh, I know yeah, that the, wasn't this year. The, no, but. no, that was, that was several years ago. It was, uh, for a, a record I did with Chris Thiele, uh, the mandolin player, um, from Nickel Creek and Punch Brothers and Goat Rodeo, uh, sessions and everyone else. I could just say Chris Thiele. I think yeah. probably most <laughs> anyone <laughs> watching this knows Chris Thiele, but, uh, uh, anyways, yeah, we, we did a record that was um, pretty different for, for him. You know, he's, he's known for, you know, progressive bluegrass and sort of, you know, pop folk crossover stuff through Nickel Creek. But we did a very straight ahead bluegrass duo record um, called Sleep With One Eye Open, uh, where um, we were basically just doing brother duet style stuff, which is the brother duets in bluegrass is, is this whole tradition like the Monroe Brothers the Delmore brothers and the Blue Sky Boys from the 1930s, and then you get the Stanley brothers and the Osborne brothers and the Leuven brothers, and and um, you know, in, in bluegrass and country music, and we just love that 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 body of, of work, and and uh, put together a, a record that was just again very uh, very straightforward uh, yeah. to the tradition. There's and, a a lot of brothers in there. Are there any groups that are called sisters? <laughs> well. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm... Yeah, well, it, it's, it's interesting. We, we, you get the Davis sisters in country music in the 50s who were not actually sisters, <laughs> but they called themselves uh, sisters. And they, yes, uh, wasn't really, I think it probably until Hazel and Alice came along in, in the mid 1960s, uh, uh, where they, they were, um, Kind of, they were all not biologically sisters, but musically sisters, and uh, just really blew the roof off uh, as far as um, 
you know, the, this idea of, you know, women leading bluegrass outfits and, and you know, they've brought a, a very traditional but also feminist, uh, you know, to their songwriting and inspired a lot of people. Um, and uh, just so they, they, they sort of, uh, I guess, set the mold for the, 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 the sister duet. Yeah. yeah. And you recently did a interview with Alice Gerard for the site. Is that yeah. Right? Yeah, Alice is just a treasure. Um, you know, she's um, uh, yeah. She I interviewed her for for my vocal school on artist works, and mm. I would say like what, one of my favorite parts. I mean, I love you know teaching and interacting with the students, but I, I've, I've you know have this excuse to go build this interview library. So <laughs> just to call up all my heroes, <laughs> all these legends, and <laughs> say, hey, I have this vocal school, um, and I'm interviewing you know singers about their about their craft and their history and music. And so I got to sit down with Alice Gerard, uh, uh, last fall. Um, and, uh, we came up with an interview. It's like over an hour long and she's just talking about her whole history and music and it's, um, really fascinating stuff. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. interesting. I mean, I didn't mean to start a whole subject uh, with my comment about sisters groups, but, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I really like about bluegrass is that it's both male and female. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the stars in bluegrass are are female, and uh, yeah. I mean, look at look at Missy and the names she just mm -hmm. rattled off with Molly Tuttle and I mean Brittany mm -hmm. Haas and C.R. Hall, all of them. Yeah, it's there's just never well, I don't know if there's never been any like discrimination or anything like that, but it seems <laughs> to be. You know, maybe after bad how, words. How much but, time do you have? Yeah, all right. Well, so yeah, I right, stepped, yeah. in, well, I stepped I would say into it. Hazel and Alice were pioneering in that regard and they, okay. they set the mold and uh, before that there were very few like band leaders uh, i mean there were there were a few i mean there was like molly o'day and um and and others but uh you know, they really set the mold and uh perhaps missy could talk about, about that but um i think the fact that uh missy's band like were all the first female instrumentalists to win their category and IBMA and that that took long way longer than it ah. should have so you know it's it's a something that uh you know as a music community still um you know we're working on uh you know being, yeah but I'm, uh, I'm curious in, but thoughts on that missy yes yeah, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> how much time do we have right <laughs> yeah but no but i mean i Michael's exactly right. I mean, it's it's changing and it's changing for the better. And it and um, I feel really great about it. I will uh, tell you that a band named Sister Sadie, which is one of the most fantastic oh. band. Mm -hmm. They're not actually Blood Sisters either, but it's a great name. And um, they won Entertainer of the Year this year. Um, they may have won Vocal Group of the Year, I think. And their, their fiddle player, Deanie Richardson, won um, Fiddle Player of the Year. So she's now only the second woman to have won Fiddle Player of the Year. Wow. Um, yeah, so... Um, and they're, they're just an amazing uh, group. And it's I think that um, I read, and, then, and I'm pretty sure that I can remember, that this is the first time an all-woman band has been named Entertainer of the Year. Um, wow in bluegrass so uh yeah i mean we've had there's there's lots of um there there were a few women in, when i was growing up uh that i that stuck out and and were doing really cool things um and and leading in their field but as you know as michael pointed out there were very few band leaders at that time playing mm. playing bluegrass um uh, but um you know there, there were, there were a few, but uh, there were lots of important women making the way. And then, of course, there's folks who, you know, like Lynn Morris, whose mm -hmm. birthday it is today. Um, oh, nice! Oh, wow! Yeah, Happy birthday, Lynn Morris. <laughs> she was one of the very first uh, um, uh, women to. Um, Pat, uh, you know, carve a path that she did as a band leader. Uh, of course, Claire Lynch, um, Lori yep. Lewis. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to miss people, but, um, you well, know, well, that's okay. It's not an award <laughs> ceremony. <so. laughs> uh, Dale Ann Bradley. Dale Ann Bradley. Yeah, absolutely. There you, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, so there, there were just, um, there, it, it's been happening for a long time. Those people made it easier for folks like me and, uh, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on. 
Well, it's interesting. It, it, I know I kind of stepped in it there, but that I don't don't mind because I like the conversation. And mm -hmm. you know, I come from a background where it, at on, on Wall Street, which everybody would think, oh, that's so male dominated, and it was. But you know, you were you were measured very equally there, given what I did. But that my introduction to bluegrass truly has come from Tony, Trishka. And from the time we first were recording his lessons, literally in our living room, that's Studio A. If you're ever in a <laughs> trivia, you know, game, and they ask you where Studio A is, it's our living room. But anyway, all, all that aside, you know, Tony insisted on having um, a woman bass player at the time who was local um, to San Francisco. And then when we started talking about what we used to refer to as the Academy of Bluegrass, he also insisted that we have um, a woman. And, and so I was initiated from the very beginning, you know, that there were always women around. And um, so to me, it seems very, you know, equitable. And it's interesting to hear that it hasn't always been that way, although I'm not surprised. But I'm, yeah. I'm really glad, Missy, that it's people like you that are helping lead the way. And um, it sounds like we've got a lot of other women to thank, too. So, Oh, I, I, yeah. Like I said, I, my path was made easier by those who came before me. And, yeah. and, 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 and so it goes. Well, thank you for that conversation. I appreciate it. We've got a lot of folks that um, would like to say hello from uh, wherever they're watching. And I'd like to put their um, their little greetings here on the screen. I know you might not know all these people, but you might know some of them. And they've taken a moment to say where they're from. So I like giving, their, their, giving them their moment. Um, so Jose is from Hollywood, California. Luke. And... Jerry, we all know Jerry. Thanks for joining us again, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Um, hey, Jerry. Yeah, Hi, Jerry. it's nice to see him. Jerry is one of our uh, big bluegrass uh, giveaway winners. And so he actually right. was in our studios. It was really nice to have him there. And Julie, right. thank you for staying awake <laughs> in England. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Julie. Yeah, it's that's sweet. really late. Yeah. Um, I've seen this name before, Libby's Bluegrass Videos. I'm not sure um, if you guys know who that is, but... Uh, I've well, seen that before. This is my home state. It's, it's uh... from Georgia. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Virginia Beach, Steve, thanks for joining us. Ah, uh, thanks, Steve. I know Steve. Do you know Steve? I do. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, Ronald Snyder is joining us from uh, Delaware. And we've got Rick from Jacksonville. We've got South Carolina. We're hitting all the states here. Wow. <laughs> all right. That's awesome. Even New Jersey. All right. <laughs> Wow. And another person, Stephen, thank you for staying awake in the UK. Yeah. This is oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of caffeine going on over there. Uh -huh. Yeah, there must be, because it's late there. It's, or it's early there, actually. And Robin from LA. Um, and Verl, you're from Ohio. Thanks for joining oh, us. Do you know Verl, Missy? Yes, thank you. Thanks for tuning in, Verl. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, now, let me just see. I think there was one other one here, but maybe I shouldn't be scrolling down through here. Anyway, I wanted to give everybody a moment to, to say hello. Um, I put one more. Oh, you do? Thanks, Marcus. Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't know where you found that, but... Um, hey, John. Well, I, I hail from Australia originally, so we just <laughs> have right. a knack for finding each other, I guess. You, you <laughs> did. You did. Do you really? I yeah, yeah, my whole family on both sides, all Australian. I did not. I'm know doing that. an accent right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. I, I went there for the first time last fall, and it was amazing. It was oh, amazing. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus is a, a professional musician as well. I don't give him any time off for going on tour, but <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. But yeah, you play bass, and you're a singer too, Marcus. Yeah, uh, started as a lead guitar player and toured for uh don't even need to say how long but long enough <laughs> but yeah it got me out of the house i got to see the country and got to tour over europe and uh mm. australia and whatnot so yeah music is the universal language so that's why yeah I'm here. <laughs> and how many instruments do you play marcus oh uh, i lost count how many do i play <laughs> well, well? I, I remember two. <laughs> i borrowed what? your i borrowed your mandolin uh when i was shooting my curriculum uh, I, I just brought a guitar to, out there to, to shoot, but then 
needed a mandolin. It's like, oh, I got one. I'm like, great. So I demonstrated a few things about mandolin backup. So I know, I know you at least have a mandolin. You, oh my I, goodness, he's it was a very proud moment for me seeing yeah. my mandolin on <laughs> screen like that. <laughs> <laughs> we did a little birthday video for Howard Levy in July, and we I played my flute. I don't know. We all played a little something because he had done such a lovely tribute to me for my birthday, Aww. and. Marcus like kept pulling out instruments. <laughs> he played some <laughs> Japanese thing. It was really cool. What was that, Marcus? Uh, the twenty-one string uh, Gizyang. I, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, it was fun. Yeah, it was sort very of like fun. the Kodo style. Thing. Kodo. <laughs> yeah, I kind of remember that Kodo. Yeah. All right. We also have somebody joining us from Canada, and I just wanted to let that in there. Okay. So, what were you going to say oh, there, I Missy? Well, I was I was just thinking about when I did my curriculum and 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 finding out afterwards, like like as we're all sort of like celebrating that evening with wine or um, <gasps> wine, that, <laughs> wine, yeah, or I cannot was I not supposed to say that? I'm not. Sure. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but finding out that like everyone in the room could play, you know, like <laughs> not re you know, of course that would make sense. Every the folks are driven <laughs> driven to this to the to this uh, business because they have an interest in more than just whatever yeah. it is that their job is. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was like, I was in the room full of, of you know, really great <laughs> musicians. Yeah, everybody at ArtistWorks is a musician. Um, we're proud to say they, you know, some people haven't played for a couple of years and not everybody is a professional musician, myself included. Um, but yeah, at Christmas, we used to do some pretty fun jams. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you if you can't play anything, we we'll just grab a tambourine or <laughs> something. But we we do have fun, and I think it's smart that if you're going to be teaching music online, you need to know how to learn to play a musical instrument so you can record the curriculum correctly. I mean, yeah. doesn't that make sense? Sure, sure, yeah. it does. Yeah, it, it totally does. <laughs> All right. So, what are we going to do now? Do you guys want to play a little bit? Yeah. 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 Let's play. Okay. What do you want to do? Well, what are you thinking about, Michael? Uh, well, uh, you want to do I've Endured now? Is that... Sure. Ooh. Yeah. Great song. This is one that uh, I know Missy and I have played together in person several times. But, uh, I, 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 yeah. Mike, Michael does a great uh, version of this, but I, I, I can I can coerce him into doing, um, <laughs> a, a, sort of slowing it down and doing um, kind of the, the, a take from the version that I just recorded that I recorded on my most recent record. Um, yeah. Royal Traveler. Royal Traveler. Record. Great record. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the version is, it's this, it's a, uh, I almost say a traditional song, but it's written by Ola Bell Reed, um, great multi-instrumentalist and songwriter and singer. Um, uh, and uh, I got my version from Ola Bell and from Del McCurry. And as you might imagine, Del McCurry's version is like fast and hopped up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, I, I heard Missy's version. I'm like, it's totally different direction and uh, dr different treatment of the song. And I loved it. And that's like part of what I love about, you know, these, these old songs is that, you know, they, they can take uh, interpretation a lot of times. Yeah, well, t exactly. Um, I think it's the sign of a really great song is when mm -hmm. it can be just done in any way you decide to mold it. Um, yeah. I... Uh, Royal Traveler, the record for me was a, uh, all of the songs um, had a little bit of a thread through it, which was um, a part of that thread was about tenacity and, and endurance and um, seeing things through um, through 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 the hard times as well as the good. And um, I've always loved this song. I've always loved Ola Bell Reed. I've big been a big fan of her, so that was why uh, I wanted to include it. But we'll just well, let's have some fun with it. Um, yeah. I'll start off a little bit here. Born in the mountains many years ago, I've trod the hills and valleys through the rain and snow. I've seen the lightning flash and heard the thunder roll. I've endured, I've endured. How long can one endure? Barefoot in the 
summer on into the fall Too many mouse feet that couldn't hold us all Went to church on Sunday, learned the golden rule I've endured I've seen many heartaches, there'll be many more. I've lived, loved, and sorrowed, moved to the depressed store. I've endured, I've endured. How long? How long can one endure? Wow. <laughs> that is such an incredible piece. I mean, that was just absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. And how appropriate for the times. Oh, my goodness, because we are enduring a lot. And <laughs> I remember the last last time we were on, Michael, I think the last you sang that the last time we were on. Let me put it that way. Mm. That was really just gorgeous. Thank you for sharing your music with us. That was really lovely. Thank you. Um, we do have a couple of questions. And you're getting virtual applause here, by the way. On all the <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let me find and do you see the questions there to to Marcus? Um, yes. Are, are, you might be on top of that. Um, oh, this is from Jan K Kylie. Uh, could I put that one up first, Marcus? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is from Jan Kylie, and it's a question for Missy. I see you have some instruments on your wall. What other instruments do you play? <laughs> Hi, Jan. Um, yeah, I, I. Well, I have a guitar there. Mm -hmm. It's my little Gibson. Um, uh, uh, I call it my girl guitar, and I bought that guitar in Charlottesville, Virginia um, in the 90s, and um, I love it. And um, I, I, I play it, I, I write a lot on it, and um, um, when I found out that Shelby Lynn had a guitar just like it, then I was like very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the banjo that's next to it um, is a dogwood banjo, and um, uh, I play, I'm learning to play claw hammer banjo. Um, mm. I'm, I'm still not super great at it, but I've had a little time lately. So um, I've been getting in some, some good practice with it. So maybe that's something that I'll come out of this with, uh, out of the pandemic with is some, yeah. some claw hammer skills. You can learn that at Artist Works, by the way. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I am aware. <laughs> yeah, that. we have two banjo <laughs> teachers. In case those of you who are out there don't know that, Noam Pakelny and Tony Trishka teach at Artist Works, along with Andy Hall on Dobro and Brian Sutton on guitar and Missy on bass, Michael on vocals, Mike Marshall on mandolin, and Daryl Anger on fiddle. Don't miss it. It's really awesome. Just, i got to give a yes, shout out Michael. to Daryl Anger. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the IBMA Awards, he just yeah. uh, was a, right. given a, a, a Distinguished Achievement Award from IBMA, which is a great honor yeah. um, and so well-deserved. Uh, Daryl has been just such an inspiring player and teacher for a long time you know yeah he's, uh, he's a fun yeah. hang too yeah <laughs> he's <laughs> he's a major character yeah, yeah. He, what a great, teacher. great player great teacher yep yeah really Definitely. really wonderful and all of you really want to share your art you're passing on your legacy and i really appreciate that because you know where would bluegrass be if we weren't teaching this generation and the next generation of players, right? We you know, it's it's it. like a giant game of telephone, uh, Patricia. It's just, you know, it's all <laughs> like the best stuff yeah. is, you know, just passed down from person to person through interactions and, you know, yeah. doesn't matter whether it's online or in person, but, uh, you know, just yeah. hearing exactly. and absorbing and, you know, 
It's so true. It, 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 I think about the, 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 um, the, my heroes who took the time to, um, uh, for me, as, you know, uh, to, to stop and either, even if they just talked to me, um, um, or, or spent some time showing me something, you know, um, in person or, um, you know, so I'm, it, it, it just means so much. You never, ever forget that. And, um, I think most, uh, most of us are, are, you know, we've, we've all experienced it at some point of, of, of on the receiving end. So that's why we enjoy being on the giving end. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I mean, it's just, I mean, if you've been teaching for years and years, like since I was probably I think I started taking on students when I was about 15. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, I just really enjoy just watching people's musical development because you know, mu music is, is such a, just a fundamental, you know, human activity that all people in all cultures and all times have engaged in in some way or another because, I mean, it's just such a, a you, there's such potential to, like, deeply engage, you know, everything that we are as, as, as people. And, and when people learn music, you know, there can be so much just personal development that goes along with that. And even if you're, like, just talking about the music, you know, a, you know, a, you know <laughs> a lesson or doesn't have to be a therapy session, but just, like, just going through that process... <laughs> Of, of learning and, and, and challenging yourself and like learning whether it's sing or play or whatever. It's kind of it has a way of sort of opening people up, you know, to understanding more about what they, you know, can offer as people in other ways to express themselves and maybe it's ways to connect with others, which can be transformative. So, um, you know, the music is great, but, you know, just also, I mean, I think a lot of what appeals to us as teachers is, you know, you just get to watch people you know, grow as, as people. And that's, that's to be really special. Yeah. I was going to ask you just like sort of with, you know, obviously the changes in the world right now, you know, bluegrass being such a communal sort of genre. Um, that's one thing that really st stood out to me when I first encountered it was just how family and friend oriented the whole thing is. It's such an inclusive mm -hmm. community. Um, what, what sort of emerging trends have you seen? Like since we've all been stuck at home with our zoom and whatnot, um, you know, what, what does that feel like for you these days? Like, how are you keeping up the community just in your own lives? Well, um, you know, it, 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 people are having to be inventive, you know, and, um, you know, I've gotten to make some collaborative videos with, with some people, uh, Tony and I, uh, we, we did a sort of a, a, a show. Tony was doing his own live stream concert for, for a while called Core and Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so one of those we, we took six songs and, and did uh split videos you know like i we, he, he'd started three songs and i started three songs and we sent them to other uh, you know and then just say like just put 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 whatever you want wh whatever it needs to 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 to, to complete it <laughs> and so uh and I've, I've done some stuff with chris eldridge and and uh you know that, that can be fun i mean because it's it's, it's a way of sort of, it's almost like old-fashioned letter writing in a way you know you can like send someone a video and they sort of do their own creative take on it on their own time and then send it back and it's like wow and then it, it, it becomes a conversation uh in a way uh, even if not a real-time one so you know there's there's that's that's one one way that i know people have been interacting um, yeah and how and about so you've, for you? done, you've done some recording right um well i've <sighs> I, I I love first of all I love I love the image that you just portrayed of of the old fashioned letter writing and that sort of <laughs> that 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 really is um, uh, pretty captivating um, and I'm just starting to do, to do that sort of thing with folks and and trying to be more collaborative uh, virtually um, uh, but I've been uh, I haven't I haven't actually uh, done any of uh, uh, official recording. I've done some outside videos with my band um, for for virtual festivals that uh, re needed to have you know um, specific recordings for them uh, in in lieu of us being there in person and uh, for IBMA and so I've, I've yeah I've been doing some some uh, socially distanced rehearsal and 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 videos with my band. Um, 
and we're getting ready to go into the studio uh, pretty soon to work on the next record um, that I've been trying to finish and write and um, uh, but you know that making that connection is it, it's really it's the it's, it's very challenging because of of all of of all the things that we know um, just even just personally trying to stay uh, to connected with folks um, you know, we're, I'm going like I'm going to my neighbors' uh, friends' um, yards and watching movies together outside. You know, which is a, a really cool thing to do and something that um, I've been doing a lot because <laughs> it's just a great, a really great uh, uh, way to just kind of share share the time together, but safely. So um, you know, other than that, it's just all been Zoom. Trying to stay connected that way, mm. um, I, yeah. I feel very lucky because I I can get outside and I'll, you know in the very beginning of the pandemic uh, I spent I spent um, all my time literally like from from the time when it was daylight till till it was dark um, outside, uh, not playing music but just like with my hands in the dirt and just trying to trying to find some peace. And trying to figure out what was going on, um, but since then, you know, just uh, I've definitely adapted more and, and gotten into a bit of a routine, and um, uh, and and so it, you know, that's that's what you do. You just kind of adapt. Yeah. And do you find yourself like just given the circumstances, playing more or less, or playing different things, or trying new things out, or do you find that like the comfort in like playing the music that you love or like, has that changed in any way? Well, I think the thing that has changed is that I have this unending amount of time in one place, which I haven't had in years and years and years because I make most of my living touring. Um, so I have, and with that stability of just sort of being at home comes the luxury of, yeah, of sort of like, leaving your instruments out and just being able to to pick up at the spur of a moment and, and fly on a, on an idea of a song or learn a new song or, or something like that. So in some, in sorry, in some ways there's, uh, it's so much more music in my life in, in, in that respect because um, that kind of uh, rehearsal and practice and, and, and um, the luxury of writing whenever I want didn't always be able to happen when I'm touring because I, I would be, you know, packing suitcases and doing laundry when I was home instead of working on music um, and, and spending two days and then ready to get back in the van and or the, on the airplane. So, uh, yeah, that it's very different. And, and because of that luxury, I find myself like thinking, oh, well, I could explore like I'm look I'm looking in to I'm discovering new music more than I have in a long time because I feel like I have the time to to go after such luxuries of that and um, uh, and so you know again just trying to make the most of it and discovering mm -hmm. discovering uh, and looking up uh, uh, mus musicians and players that maybe in in completely other genres that I might not have ever just taken the time to to, to explore. Hmm. Yeah, and how about you, Michael? Like, what has been the most dramatic changes for you? I oh wow! Uh, you know, um, I first I would say I, I'm pretty lucky as, as far as people go. I mean, I was already pretty well set up. Uh, you know, I do a lot of, uh, unlike Missy, who, you know, generally does a lot of touring. I'm, I'm, I've really set myself up to be mostly in at home in New York. And I do a lot of teaching, uh, both in person and online. I haven't, I haven't been teaching in person, of course, uh, but um, and uh, playing a regular local gig and just doing, you know, getting out there to festivals, you know, here and there, and uh, you know, recording work and all that. So. Uh, you know, my wife and I both actually work at home. She's a, a luthier. She, she works on musical instruments and downstairs, and I teach and record and <laughs> uh, whatnot upstairs. And so we, we were already at home, and um, so I just went virtuals. But it's, for me, the biggest challenge was not 
uh, performing. You know, I've, I've at the very minimum, I always had a, a weekly uh, residency gig at the Rockwood Music Hall, which I've been doing for who. I think I celebrated the 13 year anniversary of that back in December, <laughs> doing wow. that every week. And so to lose that part of the routine and um, found myself really getting out of shape as a player and singer and realizing how much I've, I've relied on just regular performing and just being, I you know, often have special guests come sit in and, you know, it was always a good, good way to, to keep in shape. <laughs> and <laughs> so I had, I've had to figure out ways to, to stay uh, up, you know, as a performer. You know, not just be sitting and looking at a screen all day. <laughs> so. And what's happening in in bluegrass, uh, like to all of the festivals? I, I think a couple folks have gone virtual, but mm -hmm. are you guys in the know at all about you know what what's the evolution here? What's what's going to be happening? Any any inside knowledge for the festivarians out there? <laughs> um, well, I, 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 th I think uh, th definitely there are. There are festivals that are going vir virtual um, and that have already gone virtual. Um, uh, many festivals that, um, like I was booked for this year, um, have just rolled over to 2021. And, mm. and many of, much of that was done early on, um, like in you know, early part of the summer. Um, with the end, with the you know sort of the the confirmation that you know absolutely we'll have you next year and yeah. they're rolling over their thing, but you know now ought to be quite honest, I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen mm -hmm. in 2021. So that's sort of up in the air. Um, there are festivals that are happening now um, in person. Yeah, and um, and and oh, then. Boy. The, the, yeah, and so and to to varying degrees of, you know, uh, observing protocols and sort of thing, but but um and but there's there's a lot of venues that um, not a lot I should say, but there are a few venues that I know, uh, particularly like here in Nashville, there's this the city winery is going to great lengths right. to to um, probably their there's their locations all over. Um, I know that they have locations in in everywhere, but here in Nashville, I know that they are uh, going to great lengths to make uh, uh, concerts safe and um, reducing the crowd and all that sort of thing. So th that's a that's model. Cool. Yeah, that's a model that's happening. It's just the problem with that model is that it, that model doesn't work for yeah. every level of venue um, or every level of artist. So mm -hmm. um, it's you know, it has its limitations, but it, it mm -hmm. there is some of that that's happening. I've seen yeah. some drive-in, I don't know about bluegrass, but I've seen mm -hmm. some drive-in performances where, mm -hmm. you know, the artists are up on the stage, but everybody's in their car or right yeah. around their car. But there's, have you guys, Michael, have you heard yeah. about that too? Yeah, actually, one of Billy Strings, uh, great bluegrass Oh, guitarist, Billy Strings. Kind of, yeah, he, oh, wow. he, he, he recently, or maybe is currently doing, I don't know, but uh, fairly uh, large scale drive-in tour. You know, oh wow! Like, full like festival, uh, you know, speaker stacks and just really trying to, <laughs> you know, recreate that whole experience. And of course, the jam band world is so based around that live experience that you know, like, it's not surprising. Corner of the music that just kind of like really right. get serious about that because, <laughs> yeah, like they live for that that live experience. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, you know, but Billy has become a pretty high pro profile, uh, yeah. you know, performer with a big draw, like uh, over the last, you know, year, year and a half. For sure. So you know, he's, he's, you know, got the people to, to make that happen. You know, I really worry about like a lot of the small to medium sized venues who, yeah. who are, uh, you know, many of whom are sort of getting left behind by like the existing stimulus packages or not mm -hmm. addressing the needs of, of, a lot of small to medium venues, uh, you know, independent venues. So I'm really hoping that um, that sort of legislation comes through so that, you know, because, I mean, it's, 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 these venues have made it clear that, you know, if the pandemic goes on for a year, like that, like, yeah, you know, like 90% of them will not make it. Yeah. And um, without some, you know, assistance that really addresses the, the, the special needs, because, you know, they're yeah. going to be, the, they're the first ones to close. They're going to be the last ones to open back up. If they and do, if, if they, they do, do, right? If 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 they do, so uh, that's a real concern that uh, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of musicians and venues that I know, and then in our world are, you know, really hoping that uh, 
you know, legislation happens so that yeah, well, I mean, I'm, like, I'm we, just hoping we, we, we just don't know, you know, we what, don't know. what it's going to look like. What and we don't even know what safe like. means. We don't even know what yeah. safe means anymore. Is it six feet? Is it, we can't even go down this road, can we? But well, I think we have a pretty good idea of what safe is. <laughs> 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 I think we do. I'm going to, I'm just going to say, I think yeah. that we, we know that six feet is the minimum and, minimum. It's, that's and it's right. aerosol. So yes, that's yeah. very true. I, that's very true. And I, and I, I didn't mean to minimize that what I was really saying is that it's it's hard to know, you know, from what some people are saying, do you need to be six feet apart or is it really further? What kind of mask should you be wearing? I mean, it's a whole mm -hmm. it's a whole other live stream, to be honest with you. But yeah. I will tell you that as soon as we can, I want to be out patronizing all of the venues and, and the live music. And yeah. I would love to be hearing you guys in our studio again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Marcus is going to be in the studio, um, j what, just uh, two weeks, Marcus, with Brian Sutton. He's coming in to do oh, wow. some lessons. Yeah, cool. we've done a lot of work in there. We've actually uh, done new construction and basically revamped yep. the whole thing for a socially wow. distanced uh, future. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah, it's yeah, all great. all remodeled, and we have to keep Marcus safe, and we have to keep Jordan yeah. um, safe, and of course the artists. So we knocked down part of a wall, put in a window, and so we're we're ready. It's just it's a matter great. of people being willing to either get in an RV and head to California on <laughs> Interstate 80, or jump on a plane. And Brian's getting on a plane, and I I can't wait to hear music in the studio again. Oh, that's great! Yeah. Speaking of hearing music, mm -hmm. would you guys play us another tune? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think we should, we do one that Missy likes to do here. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. She likes to do a lot of them, though, Michael. You no. Know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. No. <laughs> we 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 talk about this. <laughs> All right. Well, tell. What are we gonna do? Yeah, uh, Missy, you want to introduce? This, this is from your repertoire. Yeah, this is one of my favorite tunes, and I again, I I coerced Michael into letting me do this. <laughs> it wasn't um, hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a it's it's a a Bob Dylan tune. If you've seen me play live in the last year, you've probably heard this, and it's it's really fun because you never know what's going to happen um, with it. But we'll we'll do it. Obviously, we can't play exactly together at the same time, uh, but we can. Um, we can take turns, and so it'll be fun. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll try, I'll start it off here. Let's see. Buckets of rain, buckets of tears, got all them buckets coming out of my ears. Buckets of moonbeams in my hand. I got all the love. Honey, baby, I can stand. I've been meek and strong like an oak. I've seen pretty people disappear like smoke. Friends will arrive, friends disappear. If you want me, honey, baby, I'll be. I like your smile and your fingertips I like the way that you move your hips I like the cool way you look at me Everything about you is bringing me misery Slow. 
I'm taking you with me, honey baby, when I go. Oh, take it, Michael. Life is sad, life is a bus. All you can do is do what you must. Do what you must do, and you do it well. Baby, can't you tell? I do it for you, honey, baby, can't you tell? <laughs> Yay! Yay! Nice. That was fabulous. That was really great. I like that tune. I don't think I've ever heard you do that before, Missy, though. Uh, well, you do it a lot there. You, it sounds like, well, I, 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 last year on my touring, yeah, I was doing it at, uh, pretty much on every show. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Well, that's I, great. I, I, I've been on a big Dylan kick for the last couple of years. And uh -huh. so, uh, yeah, there's lots of, there's a uh, several Dylan tunes in my queue that are coming up uh, on stage. If I get on stage again, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's that's a well that will not run dry for mm -hmm. you. <laughs> I don't think anyway. Um, well, I want to take a moment and thank you uh, both Michael and Missy um, for sharing your music with us and sharing your time. Um, this is a, always a great experience for me too. It's a little window into the world. None of us are really um, in proximity to each other, uh, even Marcus and I, <laughs> even though we live in the exact same town. So this is a little window into the world for me. And I find it to be, as I've said before, a little musical oasis. Uh, and so I appreciate the time that you've spent with us this evening um, and for sharing your music too. Thank you so very much. Yeah, thanks for having us and great to see you, Missy. Yeah, yeah same here. Yeah. It's thanks thanks Marcus to all of you for including me. I appreciate it. You bet. Yeah. Um, we'll take a moment backstage and, and say hello. Um, Marcus, who's coming up next? You've got a couple of live broadcasts coming. What's happening next? Yeah, next Thursday at 4.30, we've got Guthrie Trap and Patrick Sweeney coming back to, uh, to nice. give us some more music and awesome talk there. And the week after that, we've got Andy Hall and a special guest. A special guest. Okay, Stay it's going to be a special mystery guest, right? <laughs> Okay, so for those of Great. you who, who missed it at the beginning, ArtistWorks is an online music instruction company, and these are two uh, world-renowned bluegrass icons with wonderful voices for bluegrass songs and for the industry as well, and we would love to welcome you uh, anytime at ArtistWorks. But first, I want to thank you for being with us tonight, sharing your comments, asking your questions, and we do hope that next week we see you here again. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.